G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, back at it again with some more Entitled Parent Stories. I upload here daily, and if you don't want to miss out, then you better smash that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Anyway Cobbers, it's time to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and enjoy these Entitled Parent Stories. Entitled Parents Try to Control My Bathroom Breaks So this is another church thing. I always went to a youth thing. We stayed at a hotel, went skiing, and had a lot of sermons. We also had adult chaperones to go with us. I was on my last year there, and I was 18. I had to go to the bathroom, so I very quietly got up, walked to the back, and left to the bathroom. The bathroom was three feet from the sermon room, so I wasn't going very far. When I left the bathroom, an entitled parent was waiting for me. EP, where did you go? Me, the bathroom? Why didn't you tell anyone? I didn't think I needed to. Well, you do. You always need to tell us where you're going. I'm 18. I'm an adult. Not here, you're not. We are in charge of you. You have to obey us. I can literally go to the gas station across the street and buy cigarettes and a lighter, and you can't do a single thing to stop me. So I turn around and walk back into the sermon. 15 minutes later, I went to the bathroom again. I saw her and gave her a small smile as I walked by. She glared at me. The reason why I was so snarky? Because these people were the same people who couldn't remember my name and tried to control my reading. Plus, my church was stuck up snobs who thought they were better than the other church groups. Our next story was posted by user Char Char. Titled, Karen didn't want her child to be late for school. Let's just say she got what she deserved. So this happened to my friends and I in the 8th grade, when we were about 13. We did announcements for the school, because we were all on the student council. When we did announcements, it was a bit different than everyone else might think. Instead of a microphone, we had a corded telephone that connected to the PA system that you would talk into. Keep in mind, this telephone was right next to the secretary in the school's office. And if anyone talked above a whisper, the sound system would pick up on them. We'd first start regular salutations, then the national anthem, and finally regular morning announcements. There was only one rule, that the secretary for announcements, and that was not to buzz anyone in. Front doors had locks, so you had to be buzzed in after what happened at Sandy Hook. This was just during the playing of our national anthem, just out of respect for our country. Then one day, disaster struck. It was a normal day in April, and the secretary had just printed off our announcements we had to say for the morning. We waited until a couple of minutes after the morning bell, so everyone was kinda settled in class, and nothing was too chaotic in the halls, so the background noise couldn't be heard. We had just started our regular salutations, and I went to set up the radio so the national anthem could be played. Everyone in the office stood up for the national anthem, and right as it started playing, someone had buzzed the front door. Then it buzzed again. After the third buzz, my friends and I looked at each other like, oh crap, something's about to go down. The person at the buzzer, the entitled mother, did not stop buzzing for the duration of the national anthem, which is two minutes. Like I said earlier, the secretary did not let her in due to the national anthem playing. After the anthem was done, entitled mother and her child were finally let in. We all saw entitled mother storm into the school practically dragging her child behind her, swing open the door to the office, and if looks could kill, we would all have been dead right there in the office. She then pushes students out of the line for signing in late, and starts to have a full out tantrum and cuss out the secretary, while we were on the PA system doing announcements. So, basically, the entire school was hearing in on this while we tried our best to do announcements. Entitled Mother continues to call our secretary a tramp and a jerk for not letting her and her precious daughter in while they first buzzed in, and now she's going to be really late for work. Which by the way, if you're late, you're late. A couple of minutes won't make much of a difference. Our secretary told her over and over again that it was a school policy that she couldn't let anyone in during the national anthem, and all she had to do was sign her daughter in, which would have taken like 10 seconds. Oh no, Entitled Mother was not having any of it. It got very ugly when Entitled Mother started getting in her face and threatening her all the while. 
we were trying to do announcements. At that point, everyone in the office was staring and trying to get the lady to calm down. The principal was also cold because the situation was getting out of hand. Then, Entitled Mother and I met eyes while I was talking on the announcements. She looked at me with pure hatred and proceeded to take the corded telephone from my hand and slam it to the floor. I was shocked, my friends were shocked, everyone in the office was shocked. We were all then quickly escorted to a room in the office and locked in, including the entitled mother's child, who I felt really bad for. She was absolutely mortified at her mother's behaviour, and a code green was also issued. It basically just means to stay out of the hallways for a period of time. We heard her continue to slam things in the office. There was about $6,000 worth of damage she did, and the police were called. Once the police arrived, they had apparently took her away in cuffs. We did not see her getting taken away though, although a few of her students saw her get taken away through the window. My friends, and any student that were in the office, were then sent home after what had happened in the office that morning. We did not hear anything after the incident. The school did not inform our parents what had happened after that morning. There were a couple rumours floating around that Entitled Mother's husband was very wealthy and he had paid the school a large amount of money to keep their mouths shut and to drop any potential charges the school had planned. I doubt this is actually what happened. And the second was that the woman was banned from dropping her daughter off at school and was not allowed to be within 100 metres of the school, and the secretary had hired a lawyer and sued the woman and got a large sum of money from winning her case. Anyways, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for reading. Remember to always be careful around entitled parents. You never know what they're capable of or what they're going to do if they do not get their way. And no, I am not making this up. I really wish I was, but this is truly how it all went down. I'm now in high school and I will update if anything happens with Entitled Mother. Thanks again and have a great day. I just feel like reading these things so I feel like it, it adds a bit to the conversation for this one. So someone asked, can you clarify two things? One, when you said the school did not inform our parents what had happened after that morning, I'm assuming you meant they did not advise the parents of the final resolution? Hopefully they did advise the parents when they sent all of you who had been in the office home rather than just letting you go unsupervised. And two, Entitled Mother broadcast her tantrum over the school loudspeaker system. One would think it would be difficult to hush up something that was broadcast school-wide. And OP responded, Hey, yeah of course. For your first question, they sent all the students in the office home and parents were notified day of what had happened and were not notified of what had happened for the final resolution. It was all kind of blown over a bit, and whenever parents had called and asked what it was happening, the school would tell them that they were still looking into the incident. For your second question, it was a big deal when it first happened, but kind of died down over the week. My elementary school was pre-kindergarten grade 8, so anyone below the third grade had no idea what was really happening, except for the teachers, who were asked not to speak of it in front of students. As for the other students, I'm guessing some of them told their parents what had happened. But there was no really concrete proof the students had, other than them overhearing what happened. Most of the older students thought that it was funny more than anything, and that it was just one of those crazy school experiences. I'm not entirely sure why some parents were not notified about the incident though, possibly because there was some potential lawsuits and charges. I hope this clarifies things a bit. Sorry if it wasn't exactly clear about those things. I was on a bit of a time limit while writing it. If you have any further questions, feel free to let me know. Our next story was posted by user Hey yo, it's Joe, titled, Entitled Dad Leaves His Kids in the Lobby While He Goes to See a Movie. I work in a big movie theatre that has nine theatres and two bars. Up to a certain time, we are family friendly. Kids 4 to 14 are allowed to come with the parents, and kids 15 to 17 can come by themselves. However, after 8pm, we stop running the kids' movies, which are G and PG, and only kids 15 to 17 can come with parental supervision. One of the reasons for this is because there is a bar people hang out at. I'm working one of the theatres playing Joker for the 915 showing, and a single ticket, which is a ticket-wise guy, came in and took his seat. 
I checked his ticket. Cool, he's good to go. About 10 minutes in, my manager comes into the station and points to this guy's seat on our seating chart. That's a guy in his own, right? Yup, what's up? Why? Well, he just dropped his three kids off in the bar area because they're too young to see Joker. Basically, this dude has three kids. One was 12, the others roughly 10 and 7. Tried to get them all into Joker, but was told by our ticketer that they were too young. So he just left them there and went in by himself. According to manager, now the kids were wrecking the lobby and bar, knocking over our cardboard cutouts and screaming and whatnot. We go into the theatre and manager kneels down by entitled dad and politely and quietly tells him he can't leave his kids in our bar or lobby. Entitled dad. The oldest is 12, he can watch them. Manager. Sir, after 8 our age cutoff is 14 and they still need a parent with them. Entitled dad, not at all trying to be quiet, well that's stupid, this is supposed to be a family friendly neighbourhood. Well that's just our policy, and your kids are causing a disturbance at our bar. You need to get them now. I'm watching a movie man, just send them to the park across the street. Wow, what a great father. At this point, the manager backs up and radios for security. Who is this big scary looking guy who's naturally actually a big teddy bear? But he shows up, and when Entitled Dad sees him, he leaves without causing a scene. He muttered some crap about us and how we were all going to lose our business because we don't cater to parents, blah blah blah. All in all, not super dramatic like someone here, I just thought that he was a terrible parent. As a note, there have been a couple of robberies in the park across the street lately, so sending your young children over there at night is extra bad. Our next story was posted by user Dreadmore, titled My child has peanut allergies. Remove all peanuts from this public park now. So a few years ago, some friends and I went for a picnic in a public forest preserve on a summer afternoon. The covered pavilion was huge, about 60 meters by 80 meters with dozens of picnic tables and a fire pit. Dozens of different families and groups were there enjoying the day in this public area. It was nice. And then, enter Karen, the entitled mother. She planted herself next to our table. All the other tables were full. She showed up with two other Karen haircut friends and their squad of toddlers, apparently for entitled mother's kid's birthday party. This park has no reserved tables. It was first come, first served. Entitled Mother was huffing, irritated that she and her precious squad had to sit next to a group of young people. She huffed a bit, gave dirty looks. We ignored her and unpacked our food. All was well, until I opened a bag of peanuts. We were watching baseball on a laptop. Gotta have peanuts for baseball? Entitled Mother, Excuse me, are those peanuts? Uh, me, yes, trying to be polite. Do you want some? I can share. Here, take some for your kids. Entitled mother yelling and slapping the offered bag away. No, get those away from here. Get them out right now. Me, I was totally confused. What? Okay, you don't like peanuts, got it? I turned away back to my friends, happy to ignore her, but hey, didn't you hear me? My child is allergic to peanuts. They could kill her. At this point, my friends were ready to tell her off but I am more diplomatic. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you nor your child. If I did, I would not have offered you peanuts. Now that I know, I will keep my peanuts at our table away from your kid, okay? Enjoy your party. With that polite de-escalation, I returned to my baseball game and everyone had a great day. <sighs> no, no, of course not. Entitled mother grabs me by the shoulder. Listen, you are threatening the life of my child. You have been told that there is an allergic child in this pavilion. The law says you must remove those peanuts from the park. Now. At this point, I was in shock. A peanut law? My friend then extricated me from her grasp. And I say, we can eat whatever we want. It's a public park. If you don't like what we're eating, go sit somewhere else. We have the allergy, so we have the right of way. That's the law. If you don't take those peanuts out of here, I'm calling the police. At this point, her Karens clucked in support. I told my friends to ignore her. 
They all started eating my peanuts loudly and defiantly. I was careful to make sure all the shells stayed in our trash bag though. I didn't actually want to hurt the kid of course. Things quieted down, but 30 minutes later, she did it. A forest preserve policeman pulled up. Entitled mother accosted him. Those people are trying to kill my child. They're throwing peanuts at our kids, knowing they're allergic to peanuts. Me. I froze, absolutely terrified. She was a rich middle-aged woman in fancy clothes. We were poor kids in street clothes. I feared the forest police would side with her. My friends broke out in angry protest. Luckily, the dozen other families around us were sick of Entitled Mother's ranting. Many other people chimed in, calling out the peanut throwing as a lie and confirming that Entitled Mother was the instigator. The forest police scolded Entitled Mother for the frivolous 911 call. He also confirmed that there is no allergy law. If we kept our peanuts at our table, we were fine. She got off with a warning, Entitled Mother and her Karens ended their party early, sending us some evil looks on their way out. We enjoyed our peanuts, beer, and baseball for the rest of the day. Edit. Bad formatting. Edit 2. Wow. Fully expected this trivial post to be ignored. Lots of interesting discussion. To be clear, nut allergies are serious. Parents are ultimately responsible for avoiding child exposure in public, but reasonable people should try to accommodate a nearby allergic child to be a good person. Not because it's the law, Karen. And our next story was posted by user Gegen Wind, titled, You can't buy that. She didn't mean the alcohol. This just happened earlier today, and I'm still trying to comprehend the comicality of the situation. What's worth knowing for the story? I am 22 years old, female, and very short. I'm about 4 foot 10, and I look ridiculously young. I could easily be mistaken for a 15 year old thanks to my baby face. But on to the story. So, after all of my classes for the day had ended, me and the girl at my dorm I share the bathroom with went grocery shopping. We don't really see each other very often because our schedules are very different and like to go back to our parents' houses as soon as we can, and so we decided to watch some movies and enjoy some snacks later that day since we both don't have any morning classes on Wednesday. My friend and I both picked up the items for our meals for the rest of the week, as well as some snacks we wanted to share later. Then, my friend remembered that she didn't have her ID on her, and asked me if I could pay for her alcoholic beverages, since they would check us for ID for sure. She's 21, and drinking age for lighter beverages here where I study is 16. Remember that for later. Now, another thing you have to know about me is that I don't drink any alcohol. I simply don't like it at all, and just think that it's really nasty. But because she's right next to me, and about to hand me the money beforehand, I agree. I mean, it doesn't do me any harm, and I don't care about being associated with alcohol in a city where no one knows me. Also, the look on the cashier's faces are quite priceless when they ask me for an ID. Yes, maybe I am a bit evil. So, I put the bottles in my basket and wander off to the sanitary aisle while my friends follow behind me. I scan the shelf for what I need, tampons, and when I finally find them, I happily grab them and put them in my basket as well. My friend then poked me in the ribs and asked me, very flustered, if I could also pay for another item of hers. Now, my friend is not really shy, but she gets easily embarrassed when buying certain things. I never understood why, but since I have my own problems buying certain items, I don't judge her. She then asks me if I would mind also paying for a pack of condoms. I roll my eyes, put the packet in my basket, and accept the money she hands me for her beverages and the condoms. She's so relieved that she offers to pay for my snacks, and I accept. But then I hear it, a dramatic gasp behind me, I've only ever heard in theatre productions, and I am slightly taken aback by that. I turn around, and a lady waddles over to where me and my friend are standing, dragging a boy, maybe 10 years old, behind her by the arm. Internally, I already start getting really annoyed. I've been on this sub for a while and had to deal with one too many Karens in the past few years. And here is the cast for today's show. Me, the Magnificent Emperor Penguin. F, my amazing friend. EM, Entitled Mother, the Spawn of Insanity. PK, 
as in poor kid because he has to live with that crazy woman. Also, he didn't really say much. And M, the cool manager. Entitled mother. Excuse me, you can't buy that. Me, thinking she meant the alcohol in my basket, since that was the only logical thing that came into my mind. Oh, it's alright, I'm over 18 and allowed to drink alcohol. Friend. Also, that's not hers, it's mine. I just forgot my ID at home. Entitled mother shrieks. Eh, I don't mean that. She makes a vague gesture towards the packet of condoms on top of my groceries. That? You can't buy that? Me, very confused because I was not expecting that, and proceed to draw out the packet. You mean, the condoms? The entitled mother then covered her son's ears with a shriek and stared at us angrily. Don't you say that again! She then yelled at us. You're a teenager! You're not supposed to buy something like that! Only adults can buy that! The fact that she referred to the packet as that just made it even more ridiculous. What was she, 12? Me. Sorry, but first of all, it's none of your business what other people might want to buy. Second of all, aren't you as a parent supposed to, well, teach a kid about sex and protection at some point? And third, I already told you that I am over 18. But most importantly, and I say it again, that's none of your business. Entitled mother. How dare you speak to an adult like that, you ungrateful child? Where are your parents? They should have taught you some manners. She then proceeds to take the condoms from my hand, but I was faster and just put them back into my basket, before gesturing to my friends to just leave. But as we were about to do so, this whale of a woman grabbed my arm and held me back. Don't you dare walk away from me! She was now full on shouting at some poor girl a third of her size in the midst of a sanitary aisle. I will not allow you to buy something like that. Someone has to teach you some manners. Me. Leave me alone. Friend. I'm going to call an employee over. My friend then hurried off to find some staff member while I was trying to free myself from her death grip on my upper arm. But to no avail. Let me go. Not until you put that thing away. Only adults can have... You know what? She actually said it like that. Poor kid. Mum, please let her go, you're hurting her! Entitled mother. Be quiet, mummy will handle this! To my immense relief, my friend returned not only with an employee, but with a manager in tow only a few moments later. But I could already feel that I would have bruises on that arm, which I was definitely right about. Manager. What's going on here? Entitled mother. Finally, this little kid was trying to buy stuff she's not allowed to, and she was really rude to me and my son. You have to find her parents and forbid her to buy what is in her basket. First of all, I have to ask you to release her before I call store security. You have no right to restrain her like that. She finally released me, and I held my arm because her grip really hurt. I already told you that it's not your business what I want to buy, I said. Friend. She was trying to take the packet of condoms out of my friend's basket because she said she's not allowed to buy it. And I wasn't rude by any means. Manager. Is this true, ma'am? Entitled mother. Kids can't buy those. And she also has alcohol in her basket. She clearly has a fake ID. I am starting to get really upset by the whole situation. Look, I already told you that I'm over 18. Stop lying, you little tramp. Friend. What the frick did you just call her? Manager. Quiet! Now, would you please show me your ID? You do look quite young, but as I can see, the alcohol you're about to purchase is for people 16 and above. I took out my ID and show it to the manager. The entitled mother, with a smug smile on her face, says, See? That piece of cardboard is obviously fake. Austrian IDs don't look like that. Well, that's because it's an Italian ID? I add an insult in my head, as I'm not going to be rude in front of a manager. Manager. Well, I can't verify the validity. Do you maybe have another document that confirms your identity? Entitled mother looked like she had won, but then I proceeded to take out my driver's license and my student ID, both of which have my date of birth on them, and a picture, stating that I am clearly 22 years of age. Entitled mother. Those are all fake. She can't be 22. You have to throw her out. Manager. Ma'am, the only person who will be thrown out today will be you. Please follow me outside. You are no longer welcome at the store. The entitled mother then proceeded to throw a huge tantrum while her son just stood there, white-faced and looking like he wanted the ground to swallow him whole. 
I felt really bad for the kid, but also satisfied that the entitled mother was thrown out. The manager returned to my friend and me when the cashier scanned our items and advised the employee to take the alcohol and condoms off the receipt as a compensation for our inconvenience and hoped he wouldn't lose us as customers. I shop there frequently by the way. My friend and I are currently sitting on her bed while I type this and she is still laughing about it. Seriously, no matter how old you are, it isn't it positive that you're thinking of protection? As far as I'm concerned, sexual intercourse is allowed when both parties are 14 and the law about that isn't strict where we come from. I've seen girls as young as 13 buy condoms where I was working as a cashier and even though I don't think it's necessary to have sex at such a young age, at least they think about the negative consequences. But who am I to understand the craziness that comes with being a Karen? Okay boomer, the age of consent in Australia is actually 16 so... 14 is quite a bit low, you would be in jail for that here. And our last story comes from user The Lamb Sauce Bearer. I still wonder where the lamb sauce is. Titled The Story of How an Entitled Mother Kept Defending Her Pedophile Son. First, I would like to apologize for my broken English. It is not my mother tongue, so I'll do my best. A little context to begin with. Five years ago when I was 14, I've been the victim of a 45-year-old pedophile who kept me under his influence for five months using manipulation and serious threats against me and my family, so I was too afraid to tell my parents about it because I was really naive at that time. During this five months, I lived a genuine nightmare. The guy was waiting for me in front of my school after class. He forced me to come to his place and do things. One day, my mum discovered a love letter that the guy gave me and that I put in evidence on my desk so my parents could find it and get me out of this nightmare. I told them everything and my dad called the cops. The case went to court twice because their bloody mother fricker challenged the first court decision. In the witnesses that have been called for the trial, there was entitled mother, the mother of her nice and afflicted pedophile son. So what about her? Entitled mother loves her son, and no matter what he does, he's still a good boy. First, you need to know that pedophile guy is a multi-recidivist, so entitled mother knows too well that her son has got a serious problem. The judge calls the mother at the bar. The conversation went like this. Well, good morning, Miss Entitled Mother. I'm going to ask you some questions about the case. You don't have to swear because of your status of the mother of the accused doesn't guarantee that you will say the truth, you understand? Entitled mother with the weak voice of an innocent old woman, <laughs> Judge, tell me, Miss Entitled Mother, did you know what was happening between your son and OP? Entitled mother, I knew they loved each other. I didn't even know OP was a minor. Remember that, that's important for the rest. OP is saying that my son is a horrible man, but it's false. OP was loving my son and was consenting to everything he asked. She stares at me with her bad looking eyes. OP is simply a liar. I was shocked. So were my parents who were sitting by my side. I was going to explode, but my dad told me to calm down and to put a reassuring hand on my back. My parents, those heroes. My lawyer raises and asks for an objection, then talks directly to Entitled Mother. OBJECTION! OBJECTION! Ma'am, your son has been diagnosed of serious mythomania and narcissistic perversion by psychological court experts, as my client's results are totally clean. Who do you think is the liar, ma'am? Entitled Mother keeps repeating, OP is the liar. The love of OP for my son was genuine. OP is just being cruel because the May had fought or something. If by fought you mean the constant violent insults against me and my family that I received every day for five months, the things he did to me, etc., then you're right, mate. Oh, you think this is big? Wait for the rest. Honestly, when she accused me in court of being a liar, I was shocked but not really astonished because what I'm gonna tell you, I learned it before the trial by the police and my lawyer. When her son was kept in remand, Entitled Mother and him had a correspondence by letters. In one of those letters she sent to him was written, Don't worry OP, he thinks he's clever, but we will get him. 
Be brave, son. Together, we'll destroy him. She literally wrote that like she and her son were the victims. When the judge asked about this letter, she just stuttered and said she didn't really mean that. Remember when Entitled Mother said she didn't know I was a minor? Well, his son, this idiot, had showed her some pictures of me saying I was his boyfriend. So she perfectly knew I was a really young teenager. Also, she knew her son was a pedophile, and that expletive literally paid an apartment for her pedophile son in the very same town here where I live. What kind of sick mind do you have to have to do that? When the court asked her about that, she answered that she just wanted to financially help her son, who wanted to move nearer to his job. The guy was unemployed, and I think it's useful to mention that the guy was under judicial review and frickin' conditional liberty when he did these things to me. I recovered from that trauma thanks to the legions of psychologists, my parents and my lawyers. God, thank them. And today I'm fine. The guy ended up with a pretty big sentence, and I never heard from the entitled mother again. Thanks for reading, and if you are a parent of a child or an early teenager, please, if he's acting strangely or seems much more clothed than before, please try to figure out what's happening to him. Nobody wants to live through what I've lived. Alright, that's all we have for today, folks. Sorry that that was a weird one to finish on. I think a lot of these episodes are going to finish on, like, weird or broken English stories. Honestly, it's random when I choose them, and it always seems to be the kooky stories at the end. Um, tell me what you guys thought of this episode today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Um, I want to get more active on Instagram and Twitter so that I can be friends with people like MK, Core, any of them. Uh, if you guys want to help out the following, the more I have, the better the chances I have of getting noticed. And, I don't know, if there's anything else you guys want to hear, feel free to drop some stuff in the comments below. I'll try my best to put out as many different subreddits as possible, and I just hope you're having a good day. If there's anything you want to tell me, feel free to leave that in the comments. And I'll see you in the next episode. I hope you have a good sleep, and I hope you have a good life. Bye!